Hi guys! So today I thought we would start talking about donor sperm. I think this is a topic that I should really put into two separate videos. Um, maybe three, I'm not totally sure. I definitely want to, um, today I want to sit down and talk about my donor and what factors were important to me to choose my donor. Um, I also want to separately make a like sperm donor FAQ kind of thing where I talk about the cryobank I used and um, kind of what you get for your money, the different subscriptions, that kind of thing. And I don't know, I feel like I've been asked a lot of questions. So if you are interested in asking any questions about sperm donors or things like that that can go into that FAQ video or anything like that, definitely leave them down below because I would love to kind of talk about what you're interested in in terms of uh, sperm donors, donor sperm, however you want to put that. So um, talking about my donor in particular, I will put two disclaimers here. The first is that I will not ever say my donor's donor number. I don't think that is um, something I'm really comfortable with. I don't think it's really relevant in anything. And my second point goes along with it. This donor no longer donates. Like he is no longer available for purchase, even for me. So I feel like putting his donor number out there is just kind of not teasing, but like, it's not going to help anybody. So that being said, I picked my donor in, um, I guess actually I should start by saying, because I don't use his donor number, I don't use it in my day-to-day -day conversations with my family. I don't use it. I'm not going to use it on here. I do have a name for my donor. It is not his actual name as far as I am aware. It is just the name that I call him. So this actually came about because I wasn't sure going into this process whether I wanted to admit to like colleagues and um, like Facebook friends kind of thing if I wanted to admit that I was a single mom by choice. And so once I had purchased my donor, I started referring to him as Ted. So that is his name with my family. Thanks. So I think originally that was part of it. That and the fact that I was torn between a couple donors and I was talking to my mom and my friend about it. And we were all getting confused with numbers. So I said, okay, we're going to call this one Ted and this one such and such. And I don't remember the name I used for him at this point. And it just kind of stuck. So if you ever hear me mention a Ted in videos, that is who it is. It is my sperm donor. Um, so again, that is not his real name. He is an, um, he's an anonymous donor for me. So I'm sorry about my cat. Um, so I will never know who he is, but he, um, he's anonymous to me choosing him as a donor. His profile lists him as an open donor on the website. And what that means, according to the sperm bank I used, was that by donating sperm, he agrees to meet every child that um, is conceived with his product at least once when they turn 18, if they choose to do so. So my son can choose at 18 years old to call up the cryobank, give this guy's donor number and say, you know, I would like to contact him. I would like to meet him. And he has already agreed to do that. It's not one of the things that went into my decision at all. I had friends who, 
you know, both ways. I had friends saying, oh yeah, that should definitely go into your decision because what if your kid is missing something in life and they want to know that other half. And then I had some people saying, but it's not their father. And you know, why make that a person that they can meet? And I saw both sides of the coin. So for me, it was just what it was. I picked a donor based on certain factors and the fact that he happened to be an open donor didn't help and didn't hurt that situation. That being said, um, the factors that I did use are very varied. Um, the biggest one for me was his health history and his family health history. So it's a big thing on my mom's side of my family that um, we have bad hearts. I personally do not, but my mom does and um, both of my brothers do. So that was just something that, you know, I had a grandfather who died with a heart. I had an uncle who died with his heart. Hearts are just bad in my mom's side of the family. So it very much scared me. And I knew that I was bringing, you know, bad heart genes to the table. I did have genetic testing. Um, I'm not going to go all the way into that, but I did find that I do have a, a heart gene um, that was at play. So when I was looking for a donor, I specifically looked for ones out of all of them who had really healthy hearts. So nobody in this donor's family has had any heart disease, no high blood pressure, no heart attacks, no, um, like abnormalities in the heart, nothing. And that was probably my number one concern. Like if I'm ranking them, I did actually rank them when I was searching and a healthy heart was number one for me. So I narrowed that down to a couple different donors. And then for me, and I don't know if everybody does it this way, definitely tell me if you did use don donor sperm, what did you look for? I would love to hear that. But I personally wanted somebody who was two things. One, who he would physically fit into my family. Um, and therefore my kids would. And two, that if this was a traditional relationship to conceive my children, he is someone that I would be attracted to. And I don't know if that's like a, a normal way to do that or what, but that's how I made this decision. So I come from a very tall family. I'm 5'10". Um, you know, my, my brother is 6'2". My male cousins are all over six feet on my mom's side. And um, I have some who are like 6'5". I have female cousins who are super duper like over six feet tall. So for me, uh, height was a really big factor. And it's also something that I'm attracted to. So it checked both of those boxes. So my donor is 6'5". And um, I am Irish. My mom's family is Irish. I say my mom's family because that's the side I'm closer to. My dad's family, um, I'm just not as close to them. So when we're all together, it's my mom's side of the family that we do like Thanksgiving with and um, visit in the summer kind of thing. So that's why I'm saying that. And my mom's whole side of the family is Irish. I very much identify more as Irish, even though my last name is Italian and my dad's side of the family is Italian. Um, you know, I have redheaded cousins and <laughs> we have a lot of Irish names in there. So I wanted a donor who was, you know, Irish, English, Scottish, like that kind of genes. And um, my donor is Irish. He's Irish and I want to say Norwegian and English. So he 
he's very white, <laughs> very pale, and very tall. Um, he's probably got some Viking in him, in all honesty. And um, honestly, that's also what I'm attracted to. I am attracted to tall Irish redheads. And that's my next point. I have redhead cousins. I'm attracted to redheads. My donor is a redhead. Uh, strawberry blonde. So, um, physically, my donor is 6'5". He's very pale. He's got red hair, blue eyes. And um, those were things that, not necessarily the eye color, because I feel like, you know, my dad's family has a lot of brown eyes. I have green eyes. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry for getting up close and personal. Um, so the eyes weren't a big factor for me, but I love red hair. Guys, I've been interested in have red hair. So for me, it was just something I looked for in my donor. And what else? Um, the cryobank I use does have education requirements for their donors. They all have to have at least a bachelor's degree. I personally have two masters or I will have my second masters. That's what I'm working on right now. So I wanted a donor with a master's degree um, just because, you know, I don't know whether nature or nurture is a stronger force, but I do think that having a drive for education is really important. And that's something I have. That's something I want my kids to have and that I'm instilling in them, in my son right now, but hopefully all of my kids. <laughs> and um, so my donor has a master's in fine arts in theater. What I didn't think of when I chose this donor and now I'm like, oh my God, I set myself up. You know, he's, he's a theatrical person, obviously, if you have a master's in fine arts in theater. And I have been told by my family and friends that I am a tad bit dramatic as a human being. And, <laughs> a tad. and um, so my son is potentially the most dramatic human being I've ever met in my entire life. He is, um, he's just very, very dramatic. He's got flair. He's got flair. Flair out the wazoo. So I really set myself up for that one with the stoner, but, um, those were kind of the most important things for me. I wanted someone who, um, who could balance out my bad with his good in terms of genetics and who physically matched my family and my what I'm attracted to, my attractiveness, I guess. Um, and this donor really did. He also, I think I've talked about this before, I am plus size. Um, I had weight loss surgery and my BMI is still not great. And I do have um, a genetic component to my obesity as well. That's something that I found not only in my genetic testing, but also in um, a study that my bariatric surgeon did with a portion of my stomach. So I bring that to the table as well. Uh, genetically, I bring, you know, bad weight genes. Um, so I wanted a donor who was a really healthy weight and had a healthy BMI. So I don't remember exactly how much he weighs. But this donor, Ted, has like a really healthy weight. He's under 200 pounds at 6'5". So he's very slim. And I actually met with my bariatric surgeon while I was pregnant. And I explained the situation to him. And he's like, well, what's his BMI? And I told him his height and his weight. And he calculated it. And he's like, that BMI is amazing. Let's hope it evens out yours. Um... And he didn't mean it offensively in any way. And I took it the way it was meant that, you know, I don't want my kids to suffer with obesity. I don't want them to have that disease. And hopefully having a donor who has such a healthy weight and such a healthy BMI will work to my kids' advantage. And so far, Harry has a really healthy BMI, um, which isn't something they can totally calculate for, you know, toddlers. But he's tall. 
Um, he is very tall for his age. And as a result, he weighs more than the average 15 month old, but he's proportional and he's, he's actually very slim. Like he is not, he's not a big kid. He's a tall kid, which I'm totally fine with. So, um, I'm probably going to have like a child that towers over me. It's fine. It's what I wanted. <laughs> and, um, yeah, those were kind of the important factors for me was, those certain physical attributes and educationally and health wise, there were other health factors that I looked at because I did get a lot of health information for his family. But honestly, I really lucked out with Ted that he and his family are really healthy people. Like they do not have a lot of cancers in their family. They don't have a lot of, um, genetic anything. The worst I saw was um, addiction problems and an overdose death in the stoner's family, which is definitely sad and um, is definitely something I'm aware of for Harry and my other kids in the future. But I think when I weigh that against something like heart disease, which is so prevalent in my family, I think that was something I was willing to like take a higher chance of addiction if it lowered their chance of heart disease, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I don't know that there's any right way or right criteria to find your donor, but those are the choices I made and the criteria that I had and what I was looking for in my donor. So if you want to share what you were looking for in yours or what you will be looking for in yours. I would love to hear that. Or again, if you have any questions about um, the donor selection process or the cryobank or anything having to do with donor sperm, definitely leave that down below. I think that my next video will be like frequently asked questions about sperm donors. So definitely get your questions in soon. And um, I will talk to you guys. Bye.